our fuel gauge is a little inaccurate. We're all the way full, but it only shows about three quarter. So I always go by what I see with my eyes. All right. Got the altimeter set, field elevation. We have an automated weather system here. You click on our frequency five times and you'll get the weather, but it doesn't seem to be working today. Is there an AWOS? It's a... Uh, you mean the frequency isn't changing or it's just not coming through? Not coming through today. We always do a hydraulic check. Turn off the hydraulics. Sky Master at Hogwarts uh, is going to taxi back on the main runway to uh, runway four. You should feel it stiffer. This switch has to work to turn off the hydraulics. Because if you ever had a hydraulic failure and you had a, a servo seize up, you're not strong enough to move the controls against that hydraulic pressure. Okay. So this has to work. If it doesn't work, you don't fly. The BS, BS9 will work, work. Yeah, it's, uh, it'll work in flight. I'm going to just pick it up and sit it on the grass. Just getting it light on the skids and adding a little more collective, keeping that RPM in the green. Is there a what? A correlator? Yes. So as you lower collective, it lowers throttle as well. Right. It won't handle all the uh, all of the throttle though. You've got to help it. I don't like to fly with friction. Okay, you go ahead and uh, I'll uh, watch you. I'll guard the controls. You go ahead and pick it up and hover around. Get comfortable with it. Oh, really? Thank you. Okay, you have the controls. About what, uh, how many inches manifold pressure is it about? Uh, about, about 18 or 20. Okay. throttle in there, roll it towards me, keep it in the middle of the green. There you go. Okay, you'll be getting light on the skids, just bring it in nice and smooth.
that throttle towards me. Okay, go ahead and set her down, and then we'll pick it up again. Let's do a pedal turn to the left so I can check for traffic. It's all clear. Agudose traffic, white copter departing on 2-2 right traffic, Agudose. We'll take off right over the grass so we can pull it up into the, up to about 25 for takeoff. Still, it's all clear on the left, do a nice Smooth transition to forward flight, give it a little throttle, keep it in the middle of the green there. You ready at the controls? <laughs> okay.
go up to 25-2 for five minutes, and then down to 20 for cruise. What we'll do is we'll fly uh, right down that valley to see a road in the middle of it. Yep. 12 o'clock, and uh, just hold this altitude is good. And then we'll, when we hit the main river, we'll turn right. Roger that. Let's pull it up to about 19 inches. 
We don't want to climb, so we got to put in forward cycling. Now, once you're in a, uh, once you've got your altimeter stable, you look out your tip path plane. You can see that shadow, right? Yep. And you use that in respect to the horizon. And without any of this, I could cover this up, and you could fly there and hold that within 100 feet, just looking at that. Now, put put the nose down and, and into a descent. Do you see how that changes? Yep. So we're in a descent now. And you can detect those changes if you get used to using that. All right, let's turn right go direct for Magic Mountain, which is out there about 2 o'clock. Roger that. Just to the left, all those white buildings. Right. And let me get on the helicopter frequency. We can uh, pay attention to that. What altitude do you want to maintain? 3,500, 3,300. Just pick one and we'll stick with it. 3,300. to cruise at? Oh, it'd be around 80. 75, probably today. The VD is about 105. Right. Never seen it. How'd you tell with your trip at Ah, okay. When you can't feel it, you can look in here. With the doors off, if it gets noisy, you know you're out of trim. Nice not having to worry about copy. Yes. Still got to stay out of temperature, though. In the yellow, you want to stay in the green, is that right? Yeah. You familiar with this area out here? Not at all, no. I mean, I've been to Magic Mountain for recreational fun, but not, not in the air. Well, this whole valley they call Santa Clarita, it's made up of different communities. Valencia is where I live. Magic Mountain? Yes. Right down below us at 12 o'clock, you see a helipad on a roof down there, green helipad. Negative. Straight down. Oh, yeah. That's uh, the sheriff's helipad. You see on the news where the, the wooden roller coaster caught on fire? Yes, yeah. yeah let's, let's turn right and we'll fly on the right side of the, the big white wooden roller coaster there. It's, yeah, got right. a, it's got a big hole hole in the roof or the top of it. You know me fly, is it better to be lower? I'm used to flying like kind of 800 feet AGL. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't believe that helicopters have to be flown low. Right. I guess uh, that's because I'm in the uh, LA base and normally and there's so much fixed wing traffic. You know, you want to stay below a thousand. Right. There, yeah, but here is. It's much more relaxing, less traffic, you know. Right. Yeah, the bot. Uh, uh, altitude is your friend, you know. <laughs> you see the uh, ride that was on fire at all? I don't know which one it was. Well, it's the. It's the, the middle of the white one has a piece missing out of the center on the on the second climb towards the orange roller coaster. There's a black spot where there's just structure missing. One thing. Uh, you know, as police pilots, we got in the habit of flying low because we, we needed to to do our job. But in between calls, we're going, you know, our maintenance is over Van Nuys. We don't have to fly that low. Not, not needed. Uh, so we were, 
trying, because of the noise complaints, trying to get our pilots to fly higher when they weren't on a call. Right. And the same goes for other helicopter pilots. I know, I call it kind of an excuse. In the LA Basin, I know the hel airplanes have to be a minimum of a thousand feet above populated area. Uh, have I ever seen uh, an airplane that low thousands of hours in LA once or twice? Airplanes don't go down that low. So a lot of helicopter pilots say, well, I don't want to fly above a thousand because I'll, I'll get hit by a plane or I'll, I'll have a traffic conflict or something like that. So you can't, I wouldn't swallow that hook, line, and sinker. All right. Uh, I was just going by what my instructor who was teaching the LA base, she's had people aircraft like around 1,000 foot mark or slightly below who aren't on the radios and it's just, you know, you're scary for them. But. Yeah, if you're flying over the city, from Beverly Hills to downtown, See, we had, a, we had a diagram, in fact, I made it, of our area. To be at the proper altitude, since no, no small helicopters don't have radar altimeter. So how does a pilot, unless he's very experienced, know the difference between 600, 700, and 800? Okay? Unless you know the ground elevation where you are. So the ground elevation is higher in Hollywood on Sunset Boulevard than it is down at the Santa Monica Freeway. So if pilots are flying up from the Santa Monica Freeway north towards Hollywood, the terrain is rising. The helicopter should be climbing. Or they're going to be flying at 500 feet when they get to Hollywood. Right. And they may... But they may not know it. They don't have thousands of hours over the city like we did as police pilots to know. I think the average police pilot could probably be within 50 feet of his AGL anywhere in the city. But we had a chart we used. We knew how high the Coliseum was. We knew how high the Hollywood Bowl was. We knew how high the Valley was in different places. We use that to adjust our altitude. If you have an engine failure over Hollywood at 700 feet, you have no time to look yeah. for a place to land. You're just going to land where the helicopter takes you. There's definitely a uh, big drone in the deep end doing my private license there in that, in that very built-up area, mostly flying at 700, 800 feet AGL and, uh, you know, just parking lots to, you know, knock off here just to land in only, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's shift over to the fly along the edge of the foothills here. Just, just on the mountain side of the edge of the foothills. On this side of the valley is an aerobatic box. Okay from Santa Paula. They have a, a designated box out here that they are, uh, have a waiver to do aerobatics. You have many practice auto rotations in this. Yeah. 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 I learned at Group 3 in Van Nuys, and this is where we did our training out here in this wash. All right. Let's descend down to 1,000, just gradually. It's a safe altitude out here, got plenty of places to land. Yeah. You know where those wires are. 
Yeah. Well, the guy was down about 60 feet or something. Oh, yeah. He had some telephone pole wires. Not these big, huge ones. These ones down here. Oh, well. I think those same wires got um, an airplane a few years before in an air show or something. Or um, my friend who flies out of Santa Paula from down there anyway. I never heard about that. Those wires were so low, an airplane shouldn't be down there that far from the airport. It's a little ways from the airport. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, they did find it or something. I don't know. Landing 
entry, exit, and, and uh, LD. Okay, that's good. That's a good one. I use the shorter one, but that covers it all. I love this valley with all the all the crops and farming. Yeah, it's beautiful. Pretty. It's so much nicer not to have like concrete jungle below and uh, yep. nowhere to land. <laughs> yes. All right, we want to be, when we reach that corner, sticking out, we want to be at 500. There are some wires across here, but they're much lower than that. I'll point them out to you. You can't, you can't, they go from left to right across that wash. They're about 100 feet tall, but you can't see them. When you say 500 feet, 500 feet, AGL or MSL? MSL. Right. It must drop off suddenly then because uh, we're about 500 now and uh, AGL, I mean, got a thousand feet to go. Yeah, they don't have weather there. I'd say we're about a, a, a thousand feet. Uh, AGL right now. We're not 500 feet. Oh, we're not? No. Well. There was probably an altimeter change, but not that much. Let's see here. The field elevation there at Santa Paula. 80 feet or something. Eight. 240 feet. Okay, there's those wires I was telling you about. You'll see the towers. Yes, contact. Okay. Okay, we'll make a landing at Santa Paula. So just continue like you're gone. You're doing. The helipad is midfield on the left hand side next to the wash. All right. You see the airport up there yet? Just past that bridge? Going like this? Just uh, beyond just beyond those buildings? Negative, I, I, I'm not sure. I see okay. brown patches, I'm not sure about the airfield. Let me make a call. Santa Paula traffic, white copter, two miles upriver from the airport along the wash, be landing at Santa Paula helipad midfield. Okay, let's get her slowed down to approach speed, and I'll start pointing things out to you. Let's slow her down to 60. Okay, you see the airport now. Now, Paula, uh, traffic, white Cessna 210, departing runway 22, straight out. Just uh, beyond the road, building. Northbound turn uh, as the west. Move out the road. Okay. Okay, let's slow it up some more and start going down. Now. Okay, this is a good approach angle. Let me uh, hold this altitude for a second until I can point out. See where that Cessna is right now rolling? Yep. That's where the helipad is, just to the left of him. So shoot your approach to the, that spot. You can see a white tetrahedron wind, wind meter along the river. Uh, it's turned, uh, turned away from us. The wind is right down the runway. See there's kind of a cutout halfway down the runway, you see a white, a, a long row of planes? Yep. And before that plane, that's a, a windsock, a tetrahedron. Okay. That's where the helipad is. So make your approach to that. Just make a normal approach. 
the best angle to where you pull over and like parallel to the runway. No, not over the runway. They don't want us over there. We got to come in over the wash. Okay, we'll do our pre-landing check. Our rotor's bleeding off, so catch that. May need your help with this, please. Okay, you see the H now? Yep. Okay, let's slow it up. We're a little high. And roll off that throttle. We're real high. Okay, right there. Nothing. You got it? Maybe you should have control for this, because, uh... Okay. Or I'll be light on the controls with you. Okay, I'll be light on the controls. Now you've got a good approach path. Just fly a normal approach in there. This is a good approach. I'm going to kind of come in a little bit to the left of those tall trees, over the shorter trees. Roger. Kind of pointing towards the runway about 45 degrees when we go towards the H. Okay, this is a good approach. This is looking good. Keep it nice and powered up. I'll call when your tail's clear. This is a good approach. Nice and powered up. sideways to the wind. We didn't need to do that. Let's just park it right into the wind to the left. Let's do a pedal turn to the left. We don't have to park that way. We can park the way the windsock is right here. All right. This will set her down right in the middle of this box, okay? It's a little bit of a slope landing, as you can see. So the left skid's going to come down first, so just be real patient. this in towards the runway? No, I, I, I didn't do it. I had left pedal and it was turning to the right, I thought. I felt, I felt like it. I'm not oh. sure what happened there. Okay. It must have been the wind. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, our intentions, if at all possible, is to always land into the wind. Yeah, this, yeah. This box, anywhere in this box, pointed into the wind. Okay? Right. Okay, good job. Now, what we're going to do here... We're going to pick it up to a hover. I'll make a radio call. We're going to head out right through that gap. Okay. Okay. You have controls for a second, please. Okay, I have the controls. Thank you. here, we'll pick it up to a hover, turn it just enough so you can look for traffic. Not everybody has to have a radio here at this airport, of course, so they might be taken off. So pick it up, look down the runway, make sure it's clear, give me the go sign, I'll make a call and we'll head off over there. Alright, you don't want to do a 360 turn? No. I mean, okay. Okay.
range. Proceed on the go. Go on the go. They do not want helicopters over the runway there. They've had, uh, I believe, two mid-airs there with helicopters and planes on takeoff. And one of them was Kirk Douglas' son. Kirk Douglas as well. It was much lower than this, right up here a little ways. Where was it? It's up here a little ways. Okay, let's level off here at 600, no higher. When we get to Santa... Uh, when we get over there to Camarillo, they're going to want us at 500, so we're fine. Right, right around here, there used to be a burn spot. The helicopter caught on fire. He hit some wires like this high down there. Yeah. Now it's cooling off. You're right, I feel it. Yeah, I feel a difference already. you'll hear for Santa Paula. One is the junkyard here and the golf course we just passed back there.
canal, turn left Amateur and ground, follow uh, that Delta canal. Delta uh, just cleared uh, T6 and at Charlie Light to taxi back to the T6. 36 Delta, this is the town. 500 feet. Going to ground on 121.8, one please. Going to ground 121.8. These towers right here, pretty right. tall. Anyway, we fly that canal right there. You see the water in it? Yep. Just before 7 Hotel, turn left at Charlie, contact ground 121.8. Left at Charlie, and I'd like to take you back to 26, uh, right left. Just before 7 Hotel, Roger, you can make that uh, request with ground control once you contact them and you're off the runway on 121.8, please. Will do. Uh, point down the hill. This is 500 feet AGL right here. They bring you in in a helicopter. Right. Then they'll probably have us either make right traffic or at the restaurant parking, or they'll cross us over the uh, departure end of the runway to get over for left traffic. That's our two possibilities coming up. What's your pre-landing check? Do you have an acronym for that? Uh, with the R-22, it's warning lights are out, all the gauges in the green, carpet out the yellow, fuel's good, carpet's pulled, because the landing is under 18 inches with the R-22, they can't tell the carb heat gauge isn't accurate, so they always pull it regardless of what the uh, icing condition, regardless of the icing conditions or not, and, um, uh, Check the wind, check the landing spots clear. It's good. Thank you. Are you familiar with the slew, sir? The Yankee affirmative. The <laughs> Yankee, proceed via the slew and left traffic for landing at the transit ramp. Landing at the transit ramp will be a Toronto risk it's amount of maneuver in the area. Do not overfly any taxi aircraft. Proceed as requested. Yankee, left traffic via the slew. Okay, that's... This slew turns right and goes there. And then it crosses the freeway. The camera turn runway 26 cleared for takeoff. See, it goes like this. Where's the airport, though? Right over there. Advisories, contact Plymouth Group, 
2.7. Frequency change approved, good day, sir. Take care, now, Pat. Okay, we're going to extend downwind about towards that grove of trees. Okay, that water tower. Right. Okay, we're going to go around that water tower on the far side, and then I'll... Bonanza 2 Delta Bravo, you can disregard the report. Runway 26, clear to land. 2 Delta Bravo, roger that. Clear to land, runway 26. that cross traffic there to turn uh, base, the final. Okay. Okay, let's start slowing it up for 60. Watch your uh, throttle. this airspeed and altitude until we turn base. What's the landing spot? The landing spot's right next to that R-22. Right oh, both of the spots are taken, so we'll park on the inside of that R-22. Okay, we can begin our left turn and our descent. Cessna 45 is our echo camera chart power out to 1,500 left turns reported 2 mile initial. We're going to make our approach over the taxiway, the black pavement over there. See the black pavement? Right between the, the big hangar and the small hangars. Towards the taxi sign there, you see that? Shooting up the Bravo okay. traffic uh, will be uh, south of the runway center line, a helicopter uh, landing at the uh, transit ramp. Shoot up the Bravo, we'll be looking for the helicopter. So you want to the left of the taxi? Or, uh, yeah, we're going to make your approach to that cross taxiway where the, the, uh, the ramp is. Jump to a hover right there. Center line at all times. On the black part of it. Uh, it's steep. That's okay. Yeah, fly, Jack, right. Watch your yeah. throttle. Well, Jericho, uh, you're following a uh, bonanza on a uh, three-quarter mile final break left of your discretion runway 26, clear to land. All right, I have the bonanza. Uh, you're still uh, getting me every time. Clear to land, break left, fly, Jericho. This way, towards me. Problem towards me. Okay, now you capture it. Let's slow us down. That's it. Now we've got it under control. Just come to a hover uh, right in the middle of that taxiway, just past the G2 sign. A little more throttle. And turn the green. Put her down. Take your time. Set the 
Go rush me. <laughs> it's uh the only thing I see you doing is you're just having trouble feeling the ground, feeling for the ground. You don't know yet how high we are. Yeah. So we're I think we're slightly lower than the R twenty two. Yeah. It feels it feels that way. Yeah. Uh, like last time at uh, Santa Paula, the, I'm not used to manually adjusting the throttle. Like when I'm, I'm approached, that was a bit tricky for me, just keeping that in the green. But uh, practice.
fastest helicopter unit in the United States for flying. But you have to start out working in the, at the bottom and patrol and work your way up and stuff. Right. So, so that's what I end up doing and I, I don't... But you, you'd, you'd been to uh, Group 3 by then? You, you no, I did Group 3 uh, while I was with the police department. Oh, I see, okay. I got my helicopter private, and then my, I mean my airplane private, my airplane commercial, and my helicopter add-on. Went to the police department. 
Department, you go through a, uh, whether you have a helicopter rating or not, you go through their flight training in a Bell Jet Ranger. And my instructor was an old Army pilot, 